Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani, and for this lesson, we're going to learn about genetic disorders. In particular, we will focus on how errors that can occur during meiosis can lead to some genetic disorders. And genetic disorders can be caused when there are problems with a section of DNA coding for a gene, or when there are problems with the chromosomes themselves. But for this lesson, we will focus on what happens when something goes wrong with the chromosomes. And we call these types of genetic disorders that happen when something goes wrong with the chromosomes, chromosomal abnormalities. As you learned in an earlier lesson, chromosomes are the structures in the cell that help organize those long strands of DNA. So each chromosome will hold DNA that can code for hundreds, if not thousands, of genes. And as a result, errors that happen when the chromosomes are involved can affect many genes at once. And the bigger the chromosome, the more genes it contains within its DNA. For example, it is estimated that chromosome number 1 contains about 2,000 genes. Chromosome number 21, a much smaller chromosome, contains an estimated 200 genes. And then the X chromosome contains DNA that codes for about 800 genes, while the Y chromosome, which is not pictured here, only codes for about 63 genes. So we can detect or diagnose chromosomal abnormalities by taking a photograph of the chromosomes when viewed under a microscope, and then arranging the autosomal chromosomes in their homologous pairs, from the longest to the shortest, numbering them from number 1 to 22, and then placing the sex chromosomes, the X and Y chromosomes, last. This arrangement is called a karyotype. And a karyotype can help us check for chromosomal abnormalities. For example, in this karyotype, we can tell that there is an issue with chromosome number 21. There's three of them. This is a disorder known as Down syndrome. This karyotype also tells us that this person is female because she has two X chromosomes instead of an X and a Y chromosome. Chromosomal abnormalities can be either numerical or structural. Numerical means that there might be an extra chromosome, like in this example, or there could be a missing chromosome instead. A structural abnormality occurs when the chromosome structure has been altered in one of several ways, like for example, in this case, where a piece of chromosome number 6 is missing. Both types of chromosomal abnormalities are often a result of errors that occurred during meiosis. Extra or missing chromosomes are caused by an error in the separation of chromosomes that occurred during either anaphase 1 or anaphase 2 of meiosis. This error is called a non-disjunction. Changes to the structure of the chromosomes are often the result of errors that occur during prophase 1, when homologous chromosomes are exchanging pieces, a process that you know called crossing over. So as you recall from our previous lesson, Sex cells are made by a process of cell division called meiosis, which occurs in the gonads, an ovary, for example. Now let us follow a specific pair of chromosomes, like maybe chromosome 18, while keeping in mind the total number of chromosomes at each stage, which at the start of meiosis in humans is the diploid number 46. Now when we count the chromosomes, it can get a little confusing because when the chromosomes have replicated, there are actually two copies of DNA in one structure, but we still count that as one chromosome. One trick is to count the number of centromeres instead of the number of individual chromosomes. Now, after meiosis I, the chromosomes have been separated from the homologous pairs into two cells, each with the haploid number of 23. Meiosis II then splits each chromosome at the centromere, but we still count each separate chromosome as one so the number is still 23. When a sperm cell with 23 chromosomes fertilizes the egg, a diploid zygote with 46 chromosomes is formed. This is what happens under normal meiosis. During most cases of non-disjunction, the chromosomes fail to separate or split apart. This can happen during anaphase 1, with the homologous pair not separating and ending up together in one cell with the other cell missing that chromosome which in turn would lead to two egg cells with an extra chromosome and two egg cells with a missing chromosome. Non-disjunction can also happen during anaphase 2 of meiosis, which in turn will lead to a single egg cell 
with an extra chromosome and a single X cell with a missing chromosome. When fertilization occurs, a sperm with 23 chromosomes fertilizing any of the eggs with an extra chromosome will result in a zygote with 47 chromosomes in a condition known as trisomy. One of the effects of a non disjunction is that some gametes can end up with a missing chromosome. In most cases in humans, embryos with a full monosomy are not viable. What that means is that the effect of missing a full chromosome is so severe that the embryos do not survive and result in a miscarriage. However, there is one exception, and that is the case of Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome is caused by a monosomy of the X chromosome. Individuals with Turner syndrome have a single sex chromosome, a single X, no second X, and no Y chromosome, which means that individuals with Turner syndrome are always female. Signs and symptoms vary among those affected, often a short and webbed neck, low set ears, a low hairline at the back of the neck, short stature, heart defects, and other physical features are common. Typically, they fail to develop menstrual periods and breasts, but can do so with hormone treatment. They are also unable to have children without the help of reproductive technology. A trisomy, on the other hand, is what we call when an individual has an extra copy of a chromosome. An example of that could be triple X syndrome, which usually can go undetected since there are very few symptoms associated with the condition, or other trisomies, like trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. Trisomies that do not involve the X chromosome, like Down syndrome or trisomy 21 or Edwards syndrome or trisomy 18, often result in either miscarriage or babies born with severe abnormalities that are found throughout the body. But why is that? Well, the answer is gene dosage. Gene dosage is the amount of genetic product that is needed to be healthy. For most genes, you need two copies of the gene, one from mom and one from dad, in order to have the healthy amount of genetic product, that is the healthy amount of proteins produced in the body. In a monosomy, when a full chromosome is missing, production of proteins coded for all the genes in that chromosome will be too low there will be too low a dose of gene products if only one or a few genes are affected, like in the case of a genetic mutation. Then the effects on the patient could be bad, but sometimes survivable. But when an entire chromosome is missing, that means hundreds or even thousands of genes are affected, which for most chromosomes is just not survivable at all. With the trisomy, the opposite is true and you get hundreds or thousands of genes with extra dosage of product produced, which with few exceptions is also not survivable. And when it is survivable, it leads to severe defects throughout the body. But then what makes the X chromosome so special that they are the only ones for which a full monosomy, missing a full chromosome, results in a viable birth instead of a miscarriage, and for which a trisomy, that is, triple X syndrome, leads to such mild effects as to go undetected in most cases. To understand that, let's revisit the fact that males have only one copy of the X chromosome, while females have two copies. This means that the gene dosage for the X chromosome, unlike any of the other 22, is only one. You only need one copy of each gene in the X chromosome to have the correct dosage and produce the needed amount of gene product. So then, how can females survive with two copies of the X chromosome? The answer is X inactivation in bar bodies. Early on in embryonic development in females, in every cell in that early embryo, one of the two X chromosomes is randomly chosen to stay active, while the second X chromosome becomes inactive. The choice is completely random, with some cells activating the maternal X chromosome and others activating the paternal X chromosome. The non-chosen X chromosome becomes a tiny, dense structure called a bar body. When the embryonic cells undergo mitosis and divide, their bar bodies and active X chromosomes divide with them. Every female will have some active X chromosomes that came from their mother in some tissues, and active X chromosomes that came from their father in other tissues. What that means for chromosomal abnormalities involving non-disjunction of the X chromosome is this. 
Males and females with Turner syndrome only have one X chromosome, which they need, so they don't form any bar bodies. Most females, those with a normal number of X chromosomes, as well as males that have two X chromosomes, a condition called Kleinfelter syndrome, have one too many X chromosomes, so they will form one bar body per cell. And females with trisomy of the X chromosome, or triple X syndrome, or males that inherit two X, X chromosomes, will form two bar bodies per cell, so that only one remains active. So let's switch gears and talk about structural abnormalities that can occur on the chromosomes. A chromosome structure can be altered in several ways. Most of them are a result of errors that occur during crossing over. The effects of these events can vary tremendously depending on the chromosomes involved and the number and types of genes that are affected. One type of structural abnormality is caused by a deletion. A deletion can happen when a piece of a chromosome goes missing during crossing over. The result is chromosomes with a missing piece and therefore missing genetic information. Another type is called an inversion. This can happen when a piece of a chromosome is flipped around so that it points in the opposite direction. A duplication is the opposite of a deletion. A piece of a chromosome breaks apart during crossing over and attaches to its homologous chromosome, which has not broken that piece. So this results in a chromosome with extra genetic information. A translocation happens when a piece of one chromosome gets attached to another chromosome. This results in a chromosome with extra genetic information from a completely different non-homologous chromosome. So to finish up, let's talk about how chromosomal abnormalities are detected prenatally, that is, before birth. One way is through a process called CVS, or chorionic villus sampling. Chorionic villus sampling can be done between the 10th and 13th week of fetal development. The procedure involves obtaining cells or chorionic villi from the placenta. That can happen because the placental cells are genetically identical to the baby cells. Through this process, a sample of the placental cells are obtained under the guidance of an ultrasound and can be done in one of two ways depending on the location of the placenta. Under one approach, a needle is used to obtain the chorionic villi cells, and for the other, a slender plastic catheter is inserted through the cervix in order to obtain a sample of cells. The cells are then analyzed and a picture of the chromosomes is taken so a karyotype can be produced. Now, the procedure is not without risk, and one in every 500 cases of CVS results in a miscarriage. Another way is through a process called amniocentesis. Amniocentesis can be done between the 15th and 23rd week of fetal development. The procedure involves obtaining cells from the amniotic fluid surrounding the baby. A thin needle is inserted through the abdomen and about 2-3 to three tablespoons of amniotic fluid is removed. This fluid contains skin cells that have been shed by the fetus. The cells are then analyzed and a picture of the chromosomes is taken so a karyotype can be produced. And again, this procedure is not without risk. And one in every 900 cases of amniocentesis results in a miscarriage. The point of both of these tests is to obtain some fetal cells so that they can be checked. But not only for chromosomal abnormalities. The karyotype produced will also be able to tell the sex of the baby. And also, other genetic conditions can be tested once fetal cells are obtained because the fetal DNA can also be checked for the presence of genetic mutations, which can cause a variety of different genetic diseases. Now very often, screening for chromosomal abnormalities, as well as prenatal testing, is highly recommended for women who get pregnant after the age of 35, and that is because the risk of chromosomal abnormalities does rise with maternal age. The risk for Down syndrome, for example, is 1 in 1,000 births if the mother is 30 years old. But if the mother is 35, the risk is higher at 1 in 385 births. By 40, the risk is 1 in 100 births, which is 10 times higher than the risk at age 30. And by 45, the risk is now as high as 1 in 30 chances. But why is that? Well, remember that every little girl is born with every egg she will ever produce in her lifetime already in her ovaries, halted in early meiosis. That means that a 20-year-old woman has eggs that are 20 years old, and a 40-year-old woman 
has eggs that are 40 years old. With time, the chances of non disjunction start to increase exponentially, especially after the age of 35. And on that sad note, I will end today's lesson. Talk to you soon.